Today is going to be 5-4 and we're going to take a look at economic functions. So we're going to examine real life scenarios of function arithmetic from economics. So let's take a look at the scenario. Uh, if you're a manufacturer and you're making a certain product, we're going to say X is going to be the production level, which means the number of items that it's being produced or products that's being created over a given period. We're going to let C of X be denoted as our cost of production x items and we're going to write that as a function which means that c of zero the cost of producing nothing is going to be our fixed cost which is the money required to begin production in the first place now the total cost of an item per item we can find this average cost read c bar of x okay so c bar of x and we can calculate that by dividing, we take the cost function divided by x, so that's a definition. And on the retail end, we're going to have the price demand function, and the price demand function is the demand of the item at a given price. So if I set the price to this amount, this is how much I expect to sell. If I set the price to this amount, this is how much I, you know, it, it depends on, or thinking the other way, if I want to sell this amount, this is how much I should charge. So it goes both ways. Your revenue function we say is R of X. Uh, we can say that it's just X times the profit demand or price demand function. Now this price demand function, remember this is the price for the number being sold. So whatever the price is times the number sold gives you your revenue. And then your profit function, capital P of X, is your revenue minus your cost. And so this is the chart of all of that information that I just spoke about. And you can copy this down and go ahead and hit pause so you can get all this information down. But let's go over an example. It says, let X represent the number of DOP media players, DOP iPod, interesting, uh, produced and sold in a typical week. Suppose the cost in dollars to produce X DOPs is given by C of X equals 100X plus 2000 for X being greater than or equal to zero and the price in dollars per DOP is given by P of X equals 450 minus 15X. And this is my domain for my price demand function. It says find and interpret C of zero, which means the cost, okay, um, it's gonna be the cost when I produce nothing. Uh, so x is 0 and I plug 0 into my function and so that means the cost to produce 0 DOPs cost $2,000. Another way to look at it, this is my startup costs. To question number 2, find and interpret c bar of 10. So we know by definition the c bar of x is c of x over x. So that means that c bar of 10 is going to be c, over, c of 10 over 10. And so if I do C of 10, that's 3,000. 3,000 over 10 is 300. So to interpret that means that the 10 DOPs that are being produced, the cost to manufacture them is going to be $300 per DOP. Number three, it says find and interpret the, my, with my price demand function with zero plugged in, price demand function 20 plugged in. So if I plug in zero, Okay, so P of zero is 450 minus 15 times zero, which is just 450, which means no DOPs are sold if the price is 250. It's too high, it's too expensive, so no, it's not gonna be sold. Then when it's 20, okay, it's gonna be 150. So that means that to sell 20 DOPs, that the price should be 150. And the last one, solve p of x equals zero and interpret the result. So if I set that p of x equal to zero, so there's p of x equals zero and I solve for it, I'm gonna get x equals 30. And now this means to sell 30 DOPs, the price needs to be zero. So to get 30 DOPs sold, it's gonna to have to be zero dollars. Um, now that's the edge of my domain, if you notice. So if I sold 31, this value is actually gonna be negative, which means that I have to give money away to people just to be able to get rid of a DOP. And you can't sell a negative number of DOPs, so that's why we have this part of our domain here. Number five, it says find and simplify expressions for the revenue function R of X and the profit function P of X. So to find my revenue, we say R of X equals X times P of X, X times P of X, and so I get this value here. My implied domain is the same 
And so remember, we already found what the number of Macs that could be sold, and that could be 30. And then my profit function, by definition, is R of X minus C of X. So here's my R of X minus my C of X. So now if I clean that up, my profit function is going to be negative 15x squared plus 350x minus 2,000. And so remember, it has that same domain as we previously talked about. So the next, it says find and interpret R of 0 and P of 0. So if we said that this was our R function, then that means that R of 0, if I plug in 0 into this, I just get 0. This means that if no DOPs are sold, we have no revenue. And then my profit being 0, if I plug in 0, I just get 2,000, because 0 plus 0 minus 2,000 is negative 2,000. That means if no units are sold, um, more money was put into producing them than I actually got in sales. So I lost $2,000, which kind of makes sense, because if you go back to number 1, number 1, it says that we found that the fixed cost to be 2,000. So notice the fixed costs match that. The last solve p of x equals 0 and interpret the result. So when will my profit be 0 or when will I break even? So if I set that equal to 0, if I factor it completely, I'm going to get x equals 10 and 40 thirds. And so that represents my break even points. But we kind of have to examine this 40 thirds further because can I include that as my answer? Can I sell 40 thirds DOPs? And the answer is going to be no. You, you can't sell that third of a DOP because that's going to be 13.3. You can't sell 0.33 DOPs, and so in this case, you know, you can't even include that as part of your domain. So in closing of today's lesson, what is it that we learned today? Well, we talked about various different economic functions. We talked about revenue, profit, the average price, price demand functions. So we kind of introduced being able to model uh, economic situations. And so I want to know what is the difference between revenue and profit. And then I want you guys in your own words to try and explain the price demand function uh, in your own words. So this does conclude our lesson. If you have any other questions, please leave them in the comments.